I am so sorry for the schedule. Um, I am so sorry, guys. This is later. Let me see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Is my audio working? Let's see. Yep, I can hear it. Welcome to the live. Antonio Jenkins. Oh, glad you discovered the channel, man. It's pretty nice. What's up? Doing pretty good, man. Um, yeah. So it looks like we got three viewers in the thing. Sorry that I got here a bit late, guys. I totally um slept in more. I thought I had this list at eight fifty-five. And so I slept in longer, and I realized when I checked my uh, my stream to go test my audio before the stream started. Uh, I should say I messed up. <laughs> Excited for this film show? Yeah, yeah. And so honestly, I think I might just get started now. I don't think we're probably gonna be getting that t too many more viewers, considering the fact that it's, at least for me, it's early. So, all right, let me. Let me pull up YouTube real quick. Mm. So I'm I'm gonna note something by the way. You guys are gonna be seeing my live reaction to all this. So like, I have not watched any of the film either. So like, we're both kind of, it's gonna be like kind of like you we're all in this together kind of a deal. And we'll kind of get like give our thoughts. All right. Okay, okay, let's do this. So first off, I'm going to shout out the channel. And this channel is about, is Christian F. That seems to be his, I guess, Thing. I don't know what his channel's about. Here, let's look at that real quick. He seems to do versus videos. So, uh, that seems to be his thing. So, thank, let's, thank you, Christian F. Because you made content for you made you made me content. So, oh, here we go. This is actually what I really wanted. Mark Javis as well. And Rage Productions made our Levi O videos. Okay. All right. I do one thing. Do copy link. And do this. There we go. Okay, let's watch this. Okay, leave it right there. Nothing too special there. Okay, two nice bursts. He took up a double team there. I don't argue with Carlos Suppression right there in my eyes. Okay, nice little move of his hand, but. Nothing he did right there. Really that crazy. Uh, Levi's getting double teamed again, but he's always broke for two guys. Oh, but he fell. Okay. Yeah, nothing there. Okay, so, okay. First off, this is what I'm so excited about, Levi. He's, he's, right now, he's an end. 
he's not playing solely due to the tackle. He's showing his versatility right here. He's playing something else. And I really like that. And does a nice little push move, and yeah, it doesn't really end up getting anything. Now here he is again, pushing through, nice power. All right, nothing, nothing crazy. Okay, so he definitely pushes and disrupts. He's not getting all the stats, but that's kind of common on most tackles. Okay, look at. Okay, let's actually re review that right there. Look at the burst he had right here. Look how explosive that is. That first step, boom. That power, boom. The 73 leg got freaking manhandled right there, man. That's just crazy. And then he freaking slips right through. That guy right there. His, his, his freaking athletic burst right there is insane. Holy crap. Okay, nice little spin move. Doesn't really accomplish much. Lost track of the ball. Granted, that was a really well sell play action, though. And then... Nothing. Okay, nice little push there. Oh, dang, Chase, G Chase Gabers. I think that's his name. Where's his California quarterback? Is he's pretty dang mobile. Okay. Levi O with the tackle there. Probably sits around in there. Oh, nice little cut move. And looks like he got sacked by the entire D line in that play. Okay. Uh, I don't like the heat. Probably not going to do anything. Okay, nice little speed move. Use his hands there. Okay. Oh, I got manhandled that play. Okay, nice little burst. Oh, but then he got not enough. He got overpowered by 53. Oh, he dropped him to coverage in that play. Okay. Use his little hand, got double teamed again. So he seems to take his fair share of double teams. Okay, so I know he didn't do anything, but this is actually kind of smart by Levi Enrique to move to this direction in case Gaber, Ch Chase Gabers just would move and run over here. So, like, nothing really special happened there. But I feel like it's kind of smart instead of him chasing down like all three players to here. Sounds kind of smart. I like that. Okay, okay. Kind of gave a little bit of a move. Kind of barely missed the tackle, but he had the right move and the right read. So actually, which we look at that player there he meant, that he missed? If we look here, you kind of saw what was coming. Right there, he does a spin move, he knows what's going. It just wasn't fast enough. If this spin move was like a whole second faster, he might have actually gotten him. Okay, Levi has a nice spin move to get the pressure. But Chase Gabers just runs away. The rest of this Washington D line just kind of sucked. I really feel like the only player like that actually is any good is Joe Tryhouse. Okay. Oh yeah, that was a good play by Chase Gabers. Kind of impressing me in this film review. Okay, nothing really there. Okay, wow, we've practically got triple team. Good spin move. Oh, okay. He's chasing down. Gave up way too early. I don't like that. Okay, wow. 
It's got to get back to being triple teamed. Okay. Makes a tackle. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, he's playing at end again. He's a, he, that, okay, that move right there was actually really clever. Um, if we go here, here let me, I want to rewatch that before the video ends. That's what I was looking for. But whatever. He kind of, like, he kind of like, does a little arm move and like gets past like three linemen there. That's very nice. Okay, here we go. Here he is again. Pushes through. Nice little spin move. I didn't really do anything. Still fancy though. And touchdown for California. Okay. So that was right there. His game against California. What was his total stats versus California? Let me look it up. I don't know if I had like every single play in there. I think he had in that film review three tackles. Let's see. What was it? What was California? He had yep. He had three tackles in California. So that is definitely. So here's my takeaway from him on the positives. He he has he's really good at his set of pass rush moves. So he seems to use his hand jab move a lot where he tries to smack the hand. He's got a good little spin move, is what is nice, but I think he's not yeah, Izzy here sa says it perfectly. His spin is not explosive enough. It's kinda like it starts out fast and it's kinda slow. Like I kind of I actually kind of re talked about I kinda talked about that earlier about that big run by twenty four where he uh or he just, it wasn't fast enough yet. Yeah. And the big thing you guys also do have to notice is he's not going to have the most plays here because Washington played him out of position because he was playing nose tackle. Y'all are just like saying everything before I get to finish the film review. <laughs> All right, let's see what you let's see what you guys said. Excited for this. You see they have Stafford ranked sixth in the league. I did not know that. So basically film sessions. Yeah, that's all I'm going to redo. I might do Amon Ross St. Brown if you guys would like. I actually got that all set up because I was, I was like, you know, maybe I want to watch some Amon Ross St. Brown, so I might be doing that. So, yeah. Yeah, for me, he, seem, he seems inconsistent. Granted, this is the one game I've had that we've watched, but yeah, he wasn't consistent sometimes. One play, he'd be super explosive. He'd get that giant good bull rush. But yeah. Finish off what I said. Uh, he's got the, he's got the spin move down. He just needs to be a bit more explosive with it. He has that little nice little move with his hand jab that he does. He's got a nice little like juke move he adds in with his little with his little hand move. So I like that. And he's also got he's got power, but he's not the the strongest guy in the building. But he had a good little bull. He had a couple good bull rushes that we saw. Um, another positive I saw from the film is he got double teamed. Pretty often, that's like not every play like a Lee McNeil would, but like he even got triple teamed a couple times. So that that was very impressive. So I did like to see that. Um, negatives. There was a couple plays where I thought he should have put a bit more effort in. I mean, I don't know if he maybe would have done anything in that play, but for me, you got to always put effort in, um in a play because we do not want to have like another Sue. I'm sorry, not Sue. Ashawn Robinson, you know, good at run stuff, and that's it. Um, and he doesn't have any moves. And I'm not calling him lazy, but I, I, there was a couple times I thought, okay, I'm surprised he didn't charge after the guy, too. Because one of the things that I see a lot of people talk about is his ability to pursue. Love the get-off, though. Levi's get-off is beautiful. Yeah. And then, yeah, one thing I also forgot to mention is his burst. His burst is explosive and amazing. It's really athletic. And he also seems to have versatility. So... I don't know, granted, how good he is at this versatility, but it's pretty impressive. 
All right, so his next game is versus Boise State, and his stats against Boise State were four tackles, two solo, and two assists, and no sacks. But let's see what he's got versus Boise. Two-minute video. So we got – he didn't really make a play, but nothing really happened there. Okay, there's Levi again. A little push-off. Completely overpowered by 67. Here's Levi versus right there. Okay, he did a pretty good job there holding out a lineman. Okay, he gets the tackle. Perfect reaction time. I like that this is fast. Okay, he oh he just bull rushed for two linemen. That that was beautiful. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I wanna rewatch that. I wanna rewatch that. That was fantastic. Watch this guys. Look his burst and speed is just so fast. The lineman Okay, so thing, things with linemen that you guys might not know is that they're supposed to like kind of bend their knees when they um, go to set. So that way they can uh, have a good firm feet in the ground, so that way they can block properly. If you watch this play here, he's just too, he's just too fast. They can't set. This kind of stand up, but his knees are just completely up. He's practically standing. That is fantastic. I really, really like that. Okay, now look at there. He's just eating up all those blocks there. Granted, there were no other line on there, so didn't pressure. That was fantastic. I really wish that there was a three tech spot that they put Levi in. He would have been amazing at it. Wow. Wow. Okay, nice little pass rush move. If the linebacker did his job, he probably would have got the sack. Okay, okay, all three. He moves past all three. Man, once again, that's what I was talking about. He's gets shriveled to. He was completely watched on that D-line, on that play. Beforehand. I mean, that's just that's just funny to me. And you got Joe Tryon right here, and all three linemen end up focusing completely on Levi, leaving Joe Tryon for the pressure. That's impressive. Yeah, it's not going to show up on the stat board, but I really like that. Okay. Nice little, oh, there's there's a that's a really good spin. That was like speed the entire time. Okay, a little push there, double team. Oh, knocks the oh lineman down. That's an example of good power that he has. Oh, his film versus Boise is so much more explosive. He like he makes an impact in this game. And look, oh, look at that speed, man. Look look at that burst. This. This is not something that I that we've had. That speed right off the he acts like he's a D lineman. I mean that speed was fantastic. That first step was just out of nowhere. Ooh. <laughs> and then he then gets hurt here. I don't know if he ever got hurt. Kind of stepped wrong, that's not nice. Oh, but he comes back from injury and gets just straight up another tackle. Okay. Here he is again. Kind of broke, kind of broke through right there. Okay, a little push. I haven't really seen any of his hand jab moves all that much on that one time. All right, so let's talk about takeaways for this. Now we're just gonna be going to highlights because I could not find. Uh, couldn't find. Like any more games online for Levi on Zurique. Do, 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 do. This ad would just go away. No. Dear heavens. Okay. So. Yeah, I don't know. Alright. So let's talk about that Boise game. Holy crap. That was explosive. I, you know, I was kind of coming off that California game, not really all that impressed. You know, he's had some really good plays. I was like, okay, I can sign this potential. But this Boise game, 
He was explosive. Holy crap, I really, really, really liked it. I mean, that guy was just fantastic. Like, every play, he was doing things. Even plays that wouldn't show up on the stat sheet, he would go up and take a, a, double, a, a triple team for Joe Tryon, distracting the D lineman, and then he could, Joe Tryon would go and run in. That, that is what I want to see. I want to see that so that way they can open a place for Julian Ogor, for Romeo Ogor, for Trey Flowers. You know, that's something I really like. Why he's still exposed to him, he can go ahead and make plays. His burst was insane for those two plays. Like, that was, like, scary. Like, personally, my favorite play, if I can find it, if I go back to this, my favorite play was in that end zone play. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Is it right here? No, that's not it. If I can find it, that, 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 that play immediately just, the speed was insane. Uh, what up, bro? Nice to Nice to see you in the live. What up, peoples? Yeah. Washington head coach is kind enough for putting him at zero. I agree. Well, you put your most talented guy at the most important position. If Levi eats three blocks, then the other guy should have better opportunities. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think that was a thought process because Levi, there could have been better nose tackles. And Levi's ceiling could have been so much higher at 3-tech. I don't know. Maybe you're right. Uh, I could see that. But at least you, that's a pretty good defending process, but I don't know. Yep, he's got off his mom. Oh, yeah. Hopefully they expand Julian O'Gora's rope season. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. On to his college highlights. We're only going to watch a little bit of it. So, question. Do you guys want to see Amon Ross St. Brown film? Like right now, after after I do the highlights, or do you guys just want to like I don't know, just do like Q and A's because I've only had this live for like twenty one minutes, and after this it'll be like not even thirty. So what do you guys like to do? So you want to do Amon Ross round film? All right, all right, let's get this started then. Washington, Levi Enrique. Um, this is oh wait, oh this is by Rage Productions. I'm not gonna do all of it because that's gonna be straight up copyright. But okay, I think we already saw that play versus Boise. Huh. Okay. Oh, look at that burst. Three men. Causes an interception. That's pretty impressive. I really like that play. Oh, that was Gardner Minshew. He did that on Minshew Mania. I don't like this. Oh, look at that speed. That was a good wrap and tackle. Awesome play by Levi. Man, he's just scary. You, you don't get away from him. Oh, nice little cut move, and boom, right on him in Colorado. That was a great like little cut he made. Oh, this is a rematch versus Gabers. Oh, okay, boom. Two guys, two guys, and you got through the sack. That's crazy. All right, so I'm, I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm not going to finish up the highlights. You guys can finish it up. Go to go to Rage Productions Highlight Channel. And we'll move on to this, I guess, or I can do Q&A. So what are his weaknesses? Not seeing his weaknesses. Or not seeing many. So... For his weaknesses, I think it's the lack of pass rush moves. He kind of seems to mostly rely on the spin or the cut, and sometimes the occasional hand jab. Which sure, those are nice, but you kind of gotta have if you want or if you want to have success in the NFL, you want to have a lot of hand pass rush moves. 
kind of like Aaron Donald, especially since Aaron Donald, especially since Levi Enrique is going to be moving to three tech, which means pressure, sacks, and tackles are going to matter a lot more than it does with a note compared to nose tackle. Um, I think another thing is spin move isn't perfect yet. He had a couple plays where it, just, it wasn't fast enough. I think to get him to that spot he needs to go to, and then um, I think he just needs to be a bit more strong. But uh, I don't know. I personally just think he kind of nailed it from a lot of these games that we watched. I didn't even know what his stats were until I looked after the game. This was like my live reaction. Um, I think. Probably the only other weakness I will say is sometimes he would get overpowered considering the fact he isn't the strongest guy. But I think that kind of happens to everyone. But, yeah, I really, I was really impressed by this film. I mean, this guy had really dominant plays. And if he can continue to, if he can get some pass rush move, more, more pass rush move, maybe an incy bit more stronger. And now he's going to be in an, an actual like position that makes sense for him. I am so excited to see Elite Vico because really, I, what I know is he really destroyed guards. Guards and tackles did not do well versus Levi. So I'm kind of excited to see him play that three tech spot where he kind of goes after the guard. Really, really pumped for that. But yeah, basically, not many weaknesses that aren't uncoachable. And I think maybe one thing is sometimes he didn't have the complete utter motor. Sometimes I just kind of see him like stand there, when uh, or just kind of give up on the play before it ends. I mean, some, most of the time he would give up. I mean, the the play would end like two seconds later. But in the NFL, any special play can happen. Barry Sanders showed that. So, but other than that, I really liked him. The guy was explosive, versatile. Did it had it at least some good moves to had some really explosive plays despite playing at nose tackle. His burst is insane. Like I think he honestly has the best burst I've seen in almost any D live in the film that I've watched. Highlights or not highlights. And that was pretty dang impressive. And his Boise State game was just insane other than that injury. Like holy crap, I really, really like to see it. And that's kind of my takeaway of Lilay on Zurique. If I had to say I had a comparison for him uh, after watching film, I do not have it yet. I might I might watch a couple players. I I still have Sheldon Richardson. Sean Richardson was my initial one. I need to watch some Sean Richardson film, I guess. I know they're similar in size, but you never know. Todd Wash will coach him up. He'll only improve. I'm excited for this player. Oh, I am. I am too. I am so excited. The fact that Levi will, Levi is a first rounder so far based on that film, to me. I feel like the only reason maybe he didn't make the first round, uh, first round cut is because he didn't play three tech in college. People are like, well. He still be as, as good, or what's is the ceiling truly that of what we of what we think is Grady Jarrett? I can kind of see that. I think they have differences in size though, so it's kind of hard to. Um, let me look up Grady Jarrett. So Grady Jarrett, six foot, three hundred five pounds. Levi Onzerike is. Six three two hundred ninety five, yeah, three inches in height and yeah, yeah. They they're not really all that size, but I can maybe see play style. Watch a bit of Grady Garrett. All right, so what do you guys want to do again? Do you guys want to do the Q and A, or do you want to do uh, an almond raw? Four boppers, maybe. Maybe. I think he honestly has his own little ceiling. I think he can play like Sheldon Richardson. Like a good version of Sheldon Richardson. With the insane amount of sacks or whatever. Um, or he can do something. Yeah, one for four. You actually like that comparison. Good, good. I love that you guys are working together. Getting comparisons. So, yeah. Should I, should I do Armin Raw or the Q and A, you guys? What do you guys want? Oh dang, lost here.
Which one? Live Q and A or Almond Ross St. Brown film? What do you guys rather watch? Cause like I can probably go for like another like ten minutes. Whichever you guys prefer. Like one of three. Huh. And why people keep going in and out. I'm gonna run St. Brown. Alright, I'm gonna run St. Brown is because I actually got an answer. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at this. Armin Ross St. Brown versus UCLA. What was how does he play against UCLA? In my game stat performance. I go to college. Um, he had ten catches, seventy three yards, seven point three yards per catch, a long of sixteen, and two receiving touchdowns. All right. So this is by Sports. I don't even know how to say his last name. Genuzo. And we got Amaro St. Brown over there. Okay. Oh, this is like showing his plays, not just his targets. I guess it's kind of nice to see um, him not just get his targets. Okay, he had a little bit of a push up there, but nearly fell. Okay, nice little catch he had there. Two guys right there. Kind of good throw by Slovis, too. Okay. Brown wasn't blocking. Didn't do too bad of a job. Look at this. Receiver kind of went off the wrong spot. Okay. Oh, what was Slovis doing there? He, like, stared down Amina. Yeah, he totally underthrew him, too. That was a nice cheek by 21. Okay, nice catch. Jeez, man, so was is not that great. He's wide open, dude. So it's, come on, man. I'm gonna just right open that entire play. That was just on Silvis. Okay. I'm being used. I mean, granted, we do know his longest catch goes for 16, so he can't really expect the giant like yak play. So I like that Almond Rump St. Brown is putting effort to be a blocker. That's really nice. I really like that. Jeez, dude, Slova sucks. Every throw to Almond Rump has been terrible. Oh, 
What, what is those throws, man? Okay, oh, nice play. Oh, oh, nice juke. Nice play by 15. Mm hmm Yeah, I wish they just show us you know, like targets though. Or at least if you had like good via talking about good box. Just freshman go. I feel like a lot of Slovis and stuff can be. Okay, look at that blocking. That was good effort block. Just for solid note, um, John Dorsey said he thought Amon Ross St. Brown during the draft room was the best blocking receiver in the draft. So, it's pretty nice to hear. He's a very willing blocker. I like that. And overthrow because Slovis cannot throw, man. Jeez. So like twenty one can jump and catch apparently. Yeah, that 21 guy is his favorite target. I, I don't see good sporting by um, or all the crap. It's not being as fun. Okay, great catch. Why is every... Okay. Yo, chat. Slovis... Slovis... Cannot throw. Holy crap. St. Brown has had four. Four throws. All of them sucked. Holy crap. I really hope we don't end up drafting him if, if we have to draft a quarterback. Like, holy crap. Um, no, I did not say that uh, Dorsey thought he was the best receiver. That he was the best blocking wide receiver. And they said that in the draft room before he was even selected. So, like, Dorsey was talking about uh, receivers that were still available. And he said, uh, I think we should get on Marcy Brown. I think he's the best blocking receiver. Welcome, Izzy, by the way, and yeah, okay, talking about Levi, I agree. I'd be pretty concerned if Amara had to have pass rush moves. Running open, yep, he's he's open all the time, man. Um, welcome to the live, by the way, Avery. All right. So let's get back to it, instead of me complaining about slowest sucking. 
Okay, I'm on right here. It's a run play. Don't really see much. And nothing much from 29. This is going to be a pass play. Yes, it is. Perfect throw to Amon Rahu. Had a nice little push off. And put the ball nicely in his hands. Okay. Slow this really. Oh my gosh. Well, he's already my least favorite quarterback of this draft. Oh, that's not good. That was a straight up drop. That, that's not on. That's not slow. Us. That's on St. Brown. Although, what the freak happened? That was good form. I don't want to replay in that. What what happened? Did he try to run off it? I feel like he just tried to run off it or something. Oh no, he just closed his hands too early. He had the technique now and everything. He just closed his hands too early. Okay. It didn't look like he tried to run off it, and I thought his form was good. Okay. Okay. Uh, their motion. Terrible sell off by Slovis, man. Barely even lift his arm. Jeez, this is starting to turn into this is like turned into an anti Slovis live right now. Rick, I just need to stop carrying. So obviously sucks. And he got sacked. Not his fault though. My line crashed. Okay. Alan Ross and Brown with a good catch. Perfect hands. Kevin's chest. I like that. Okay. All right. Uh, nothing really, huh? We see a second touchdown. Is that the sixteen-yard catch? I got bad. I don't really blame Slovis for that. Jeez. I couldn't quite do it. I don't know. I don't know. Who got that. I think it was fifteen. Where's that second touchdown? It's got to be Amonra then. Was it Amonra? What's the score? 43 48, okay. Alright, there's one more play. So did Almanra get like the last touchdown or something? Alright. Yeah, he gets the last touchdown in the red zone. Boom, contested catch. Right in there. Perfect turn. Good jump. Great catch. Alright. So let's see. You guys said why I was going. Slovis is awful. He might be Trubisky. Honestly, yeah. That that was just bad, man. Silva's being that bad makes St. Brown look way better. I fully agree. I, the only thing I, the only negative I saw from Amon Ra was the drop pass. And every receiver has a drop pass. So, personally, um, I don't know. He looked explosive at plays and times. 
Um, I'm actually going to do a real one. I think I'm only going to do this one Amonrod film. Because I got like three others. And I actually have to go in a bit. So I'll do an Amonrod live tomorrow. And then, yeah. Where does the line to D-line rank in the division? Depends on what you define as D-line. If you define outside linebackers as D-line, I guess that matters. Here, let, let's compare, I guess, right now. That, that's probably my final thing. Detroit Lions. Let's go up here. Good question. Oh, no. I think I went broke a wall here and there. Exactly. So, and there was only one drop, so I'm not going to say... Yeah, sure, friends. Yeah, I don't know. It just also depends, though, because technically in a 3-4, the outside linebackers are part of the D-line. But it, I can give you a comparison, anyway, just for normal D-linemen. So our 3-4 D-linemen are Michael Brockers, Levi Enrique, and I know Emily McNeil is the starter at nose tackle by the end of the season. <sighs> Okay, let's compare that to the rest of the division. But even then, we still got John Pensini. I'm actually very high on our nose tackles. I think we got our nose tackles set for like the next four years. So I'm really happy about that. Um, okay. I wish that I could just kind of compare everything at once. So let's, let's look at the, the D line and their stats. Michael Brockers had 51 tackles and five sacks. I know he had 17 quarterback pressures. Levi on Zurique. Can't really know, but I'm, I predict a six sack season with like 40 tackles. And I think he gets like 22 quarterback pressures or something. Maybe 30. Then you have Lee McNeil, who was double teamed every play. I don't think you'll see much of him. I think maybe 24 tackles and like two sacks, maybe, maybe three. I think he's going to take up a lot of that. Then you have John Penasini. I think he'll have kind of like a repeat, repeat year, except maybe like 40 tackles, maybe 50, since he's playing the entire year. I really like these guys. Um, and those are, kind of our, those, those are kind of our guys. So that's why it's hard for me to say D-line, because none of these guys are actually technically designed to get like sacks and pressures, besides from maybe Levi L. Most of these guys are designed to, to stop the run, like John and Lemar. You know, take up double teams, kind of like Brockers. Brockers has never been much of a pass rusher. So far, all we got is Levi Anzarike, who's going to be the kind of the guy who gets pressure and sacks. So that leaves up to Romeo and Jamie, and that's why I think I'm going to count them as, uh, sorry, Trey and Romeo, because those guys are outside linebackers, and they're the guys that are going to be designed to get sacks. And Romeo had 10 sacks last year, and Trey Flowers had 7 when he was actually healthy, so that's why I'm going to compare. So if we go to Chicago, um, Team Hex, what's the stat line last year? 49 tackles, 3.5 sacks, one fumble recovery. What was his pressure rate? So he was actually outshined by, outshined by Brockers last year. He he only had he had he did have twenty one quarterback hits though so that's pretty impressive and twenty nine quarterback pressure so in base stats uh, Brockers was better but in terms of, like pressures and QB hits Hicks was better and run game Brockers was superior so I I'm gonna give him a duel of a draw there Eddie Goldman. Outshined by John Penasini. And I think Lee McNeil is better than John. So, we got the better nose tackle. Delisle Nicholas. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think... I think Levi Enrique will have a better season than this guy. What, what are his PFR numbers? Delisle... Nicholas... PFR. Okay, 13 QB hits. Oh, I guess I was like, I don't know. 
Uh, where's his advanced stats? Six more pressure, pressure, so I actually have more pressures already. So he gets outshined by Levi, my predictions. But I guess technically Levi's more proven. I mean, Belas more proven. Cleo Max better than Romeo. And Robert Quinn is not better than Trey right now. Robert had a really big down year, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of total talent, we got the more outside linebackers, but the Bears got Khalil Mack. So in total, I think the Lions have more t overall talent. Just Khalil Mack carries the team that he might look better. And then the Packers, I don't even look at them. They're statistically the best. And I think we got a better team. Um, if you compare the Vikings, the Vikings do play 4-3. Uh, so we're only going to compare their D-line. Daniel Hunter, I'm not even going to look at him. He's insane. And Michael Pierce, Silver, and Donald Donald. I think the Lions have the third-ranked D-line. Maybe, maybe second. My biggest thing is Dalvin Tomlinson isn't ready for change the D-line. Pierce had it down here. Richardson was letting go of for a reason. It's Daniel Hunter and Tomlinson that kind of went it out for me. Because I think they're just that dominant. And I still think Sheldon Richardson's a solid player. So to answer your question, I think it's like three. I pray the Lord that golf plays well so not draft a quarterback next year. For sure, man. Especially if it's not the first overall, we can't get Sam Howell. Isn't the rookie sack record 7.56 for Levi would be huge. Rookie sack record. The rookie sack record is 14.5, held by Javon Kears, the former NFL at 14.5 sacks in 1999 of the Tennessee Titans. No. <laughs> uh, but it's still a good season for Levi. I think that might be like the above average, though. A couple of people have been comparing Neil to Sheldon Rankins, but I don't see it. Or it was Levi. I can feel like Neil the harder. And Lee McNeil is De'Aaron Payne, in my opinion. I'll, I'll show you why. Lee McNeil. First off, they're both noses. Next year. I'll just go to Washington. What the heck? I'll just go to Washington football team. If we go the Aaron Payne. Six foot three, three twenty. If we go to Lily McNeil. Combine profile. So make sure I got everything correct. Three six three three hundred twenty. Six three three hundred twenty. Six three three Lee McNeil combine. 23, 20, 23, 20, 23, 20. And I'm going to add that to the share. Microsoft Edge tap. Boom. Boom. Because for whatever reason, we're blaming. All right. So, 6, 3, 3, 20 was the size for DRP. Lee McNeil is 6, 2, 317. Overall, they have similar size, but I also think the big thing is DRM Payne. Here's what I think. Darren Payne's stats. Look at him real quick. Never much of a pass rusher. I mean, he did have the five the one year, but that's it. I just think, in terms of play style, Darren Payne can get is the is that type of run tucker. I think he can get the fifty six tackles sometime in his career. Maybe not his rookie year, but I, I honestly think he's like it. And I think he can get three and maybe even five sacks one day. But for now, he's more of a two, one sack as a rookie year with like 30 tackles. But it's just the double teams are going to be the thing. They're similar in size, and that's just what I think they can be. And that's my comparison. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to be the end of the live. It's been 54 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed it, loved everything. If you guys would like, maybe I can try to find more film on a certain player. I'm going to do Amonar tomorrow, 
I could, maybe you guys can choose, maybe I should do film on Sewell. Granted, I do think Luke's already done a bunch of Sewell videos, so maybe not. Maybe I'll do a Lee McNeil with you guys. I already did watch some of Lee McNeil film, but can still totally do that. I could do Efitu. I could do Derek Barnes, Jamar Jefferson, even though I don't really think Jefferson will do anything this year. But, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Put some comments on what you guys would be some film ideas you'd want to watch and just normal video ideas. And I'll see you guys later. One pride.